something that needs a little fixing on Far Point Farms. Hey guys, it's Eric here at Far Point Restorations. Tonight we are wrapping up the series of garage organizational stuff here. And I'm shouldn't gonna end this thing with, with this and two others that I built that are like it. This used to be a pass through to the other side of the shop. I have my radio gear over in this corner here. And I decided, man, I don't wanna get into the area where I'm gonna work on cars because I got tires usually right about here. That still gave me about 40 inches, 42 inches I think is what I measured out as when I have an average size car in here. So I decided it would actually be nice to have some tabletop space when I'm working on stuff, put a caliper here, put an axle here, something like that, lay it out on top of this and use that space efficiently. But I didn't just want to have a tabletop, so I wanted to make some storage. And I'm going to go ahead and get down here and show you what I came up with. This was all scrap wood that I picked up, cold wood. It's not the prettiest stuff you'll ever see, but it, it worked out pretty darn well in the end. The pieces that I used here are a two by four, and a two by eight. So I ended up with, uh, you know, not a ton of space, but just enough space. And I gave myself two shelves plus a little bit of room underneath. Uh, not that I can really do anything, but it keeps the moisture level off. Now up here, this stuff comes and goes. It's overflow for chemicals. But if I'm going to do a job for a customer, like let's say somebody wants to have a transmission flush and I need 12 or 14 quarts of transmission fluid, well, I can go pick up a case, kind of like the case you see right down there and I can have it on hand and not you know, have it just sitting out somewhere. So it gives me a little bit of room there. Do you have some tire slime there? And that, that stuff there is for camping, a tire inflator. My little Mighty Vac is here. That's empty. And these are tire chains that I need to install here later on this month. We're getting ready to get into winter. But down here on the bottom is where I wanted to spend a little bit of time. And it's kind of hard. Some of these are starting to peel off. But I picked up a bunch of these totes and what I've done with it is I've got my parts, used pieces, that I could use on various vehicles. So if, if I'm like my engine rebuild kit for the Type 1, the Volkswagen Rabbit, or Beetle engine, I'm sorry, that I built. Well, now I have a bunch of spares in here. I've got an old points distributor. I've got leftover fuel lines, so on and so forth. I put them in here, and then I can stack it and store that stuff so I don't just have you know, piles of weird parts hanging out. Below that one is actually my water-cooled stuff. There's a couple spares in there as well. Some of these are empty. They're empty for right now. Sandpaper is in this one. I've got some mower belts and parts in here. But a lot of these are like room to expand, I should say. So I picked this up with the idea that as I acquired stuff and parted ways with stuff that I would have a place to organize and store it. When I'm in the middle of a project, like the bus is getting ready to come back in here and it'll probably be in here for a good solid six months while I do the conversion. So much is gonna come off of that bus. And if I just had it scattered all over the place, well, that'd be a mess. And so I'll be able to now keep these, label them, and you know, like, okay, this will be steering and suspension components for bus. You know, this will be electrical system for bus and so on and so forth. So that's, that's what I've got going on here. This is probably the last solid addition I'm going to do to this garage. It was, a, it was something I thought about for probably the last four years and I just decided to go ahead and do it this year. And let me take you around and show you some of the other things that I have here that I have installed over the years to, you know, keep me organized. And I guess the next place to stop is right here. This is where I store firewood. This was like a glove or I don't even remember what it was, but it was something for Christmas related that my wife brought home for a dollar. It was already kind of built and I just added shelves here for the smaller tinder and, and paper stuff goes in these top two areas. And then this bottom one we stack firewood into. This shop is heated by wood and it's a real pain in the you know what if I have to stop in the middle of a project to go out to the wood pile and carry back load after load after load of wood, especially on a crummy day where I'm kicking the door open. But if I can do it on the days that the sun is shining and it's not too bad and load this thing up, well, this is about a week's worth of wood. Uh, I say a week's worth, but I'm only working out here about an average of four hours a day. So it's enough to get a fire started and get it up to temperature and work out here, you know, for a couple hours every day. And then I refill it. So that is where that is. You can see I wasted no space. I've got a load bearing right here support. And this item here, I didn't build this. I just modified it slightly. This was actually like a glove rack from uh, Lowe's that my wife brought home after the season was over for like five bucks. It was actually pretty darn stout. 
So I just nailed it to the back wall. And you can see on this side, it is right up against that door. But it only sticks out about two, two feet, two and a half feet. So it doesn't take up a lot of space, but I don't end up having wood that's just falling out into the shop all the time. So really cool right there. Let's check out the other side. And this would be the last spot here. If we start down at this end, you can see that I've got two more of those cobalt-esque uh, parts holders that we got from Lowe's. These are just gray, and they used to carry nuts and bolts. They're in fairly rough shape, but I stacked the two of them up, and they're full of like radio components, wiring, stuff like that. So this is kind of more my radio cabinetry there, although someday I'd love to recover those and use them for automotive purposes. For right now, that's firmly where they're living. And then these tables here, you'll notice these tables are pretty high topped. I built these specifically for me and mine. When my wife comes out here, she always has a fit that she can't even hardly reach up here. But for me, this is really, really convenient. In another video on the other channel, I showed how I recently upgraded these to metal tops for like $5 and a little bit of effort. But these are here again. Right now, this is full of Volkswagen uh, bus parts. So that is the next restoration that I'm going to be more heavily involved in. And I've got a lot of excess pieces here. Normally, this area is open. I do have a couple batteries and some, some um, heavier, larger tools that I keep over here. But for right now, I've got exhaust and brackets and everything else there. And so that's what's keeping that busy. Down this corner, um, I've got my little roll cart that has been excellent. I did a video for this a couple of years back. It's like a $100 pickup from Amazon that is perfect because it rolls in every direction for working on cars. I keep that. But if you pull that out, you might not be able to see it in the video. I have room for jacks and jack stands and tire changing machine is under here. You just roll them out when you need it. And you can see my bullet heater from last year is underneath here as well. And I'm probably going to add a second. I've got this really small clamp on bench vise, but I've got another vise. So I'm probably going to add it over there. And so these are spaces that are both useful on top, but that I can put heavier equipment up underneath when I need to. Um, I guess that'll do it. I do have, you know, the toolboxes, which I've covered in other videos. And I have covered the nuts and bolts storage in another video. So you've kind of got the run of it. Does it have to be as wild or as mild, depending on who you are, as what I've shown you here tonight? Certainly not, but trying to squeeze every inch out of a shop is uh, something that I think all mechanics do, especially you do it yourselfers here at the house. I could have, you know, I, I, well, my last shop was one bay. It was one bay with a four foot side on there with a slanted roof that barely cleared my head. And, uh, and I made it work then for years and I made a lot of money out of that shop. So having this has been a, a blessing, no doubt, but it's amazing. It's, it's kind of like, I don't even know how the joke goes, but me and my coworker were kidding around. Dustin and I were talking about how you could build a shop, you know, your dream shop, and it would be an eight bay. And in a, in a year, you'd be wishing you had built it to be a 10 bay. So it's just the way it is. And this is, this is a hobby or this is our secondary jobs or primary jobs that space is always going to be something that you're, you're wondering about. You're, you know, hey, do I have enough room? Can I use some more? And, uh, and in this case, I've done everything I can to maximize the space available. And I think it's worked out pretty well. I guess that'll do it for tonight. That's the end of this little series. Trying to come up with content when I don't have customer cars that I can work on for you is a little difficult on this channel. It was a little more difficult to come up with stuff like this. But between this and some of the throwback videos, I've, I've been trying. <laughs> I guess that'll do it for tonight, my friends. Take care.